the Kangang, often known as China's Heavenly Palace, is the most sophisticated space station that has ever been used by humans. And while that's a significant issue, not many in the West actually understand it, truly stand tall or even possess a great deal of knowledge in. This is how the Chinese have redesigned the space station for the 21st century. They succeeded. This is Cosmic Era. The problem is, even while space stations have been launched since the early 1970s, the Tiangang is the first to distinguish itself from the status quo, which is really simply a spacecraft, by appearing more like a work of science fiction. Did you know that the Salute, a single module Soviet designed from 1971, was the first space station ever to be deployed? NASA then exceeded that two years later, in 1973, with the launch of Skylab, their own station housed inside the massive Saturn V moon rocket's upper stage that had been hollowed out. However, the world witnessed the launch of the first ever modular space station, known as Mira by the Soviets, in 1986. The construction of the seven-module Mira station would take 10 years, and despite the Soviet Union's fall occurring in the midst of the project, the Russians would solidify their position as the space station industry leaders. Create thus, we can observe that the International Space Station, which we have all come to know so well now, is very similar to Russia's Mir. In fact, I don't think it's unjustified to view the International Space Station as merely version 2, given that the Russians had decades of experience with many space stations while NASA had essentially no practical knowledge. It's quite obvious where this design approach came from. Looking back, we can't say that the design underwent a significant amount of advancement or progression from Solar to Skylab to Mir to ISS. Among all the space stations, Skylab stands out as the most luxurious, even though it was built almost half a century ago. A submarine and the Starship Enterprise have far more in common than the Soviet design aesthetic that persisted all the way to the International Space Station. It's crowded and disorganized. Pipes, wires, and who knows what else protrude from every direction. Let's fast forward to China and observe the stark contrast between the two. Though there are just roughly 20 years separating Changgong and the ISS, advancement appears to have occurred over a century. These days, the Tiangang is made up of three modules that combine to form a T-shaped space station, 55 meters long and 39 meters wide, orbiting 400 kilometers above Earth's surface. The main command module, Tianhe, was initially introduced on April 20th and 21. The Wenxian Experiment Module, which was introduced in July 20, 22, functions as an airlock, crew quarters, and research lab all combined. The Mengxian Module, which joined the station on November 20, 22, is the twin of the Wenxian Module and serves only as a research and experiment space. This is an exceptionally fast rate of building for space stations. The International Space Station took two years for Russia and NASA to get to a habitable state, and it took 10 years for the project to be completed. Although it may appear that this station appeared overnight, it is actually the third stage of a scheme China began in the 1990s under the codename Project 921. This resembles China's space conquest blueprint in certain ways. The creation and launch of a rocket and spacecraft that could carry a crew was phase one of the plan. These are the Long March 2 Fahrenheit and the Shenzhou, both of which were launched in 1999. The People's Red Army commander and war hero Mao Zedong is the inspiration behind the name of the Long March series of rockets. Shenzhou translates to Divine Vessel. With the Shenzhou 5 mission, this system launched China's first taken out into low Earth orbit in 2003. Phase 2, or practice phase, of the plan started with this. By Shenzhou 7, the Chinese had used their own extra vehicular suits to accomplish their first spacewalk. After that, the nation started deploying test modules, which resembled tiny space stations. Chinese crews would perform docking maneuvers between the Shenzhou and the test modules during their first prolonged stays in orbit. Around this same period, China began developing the Tianzhou spacecraft, commonly known as the Heavenly Ship, a 650kg freight delivery vehicle. This spacecraft was made to operate on the new Long March 7th rocket, which replaced the outdated 2F rocket that was initially launched in 2016 with a more current model. We are currently in Phase 3 of the plan, the creation and assembly of the Tiangang, also known as Heavenly Palace, a new space station. Why then does Trying have such a strong desire to build their own space station? For starters, who wouldn't want their own private area hangout? It's extremely great. However, for number two, it is also likely related to the fact that Chinese nationals are prohibited from entering the International Space Station, which goes against the station's actual name. However, the United States declared in 2011 that China was not allowed to visit the station. The Department of Defense Act, which was passed by the U.S. Congress and specifically prohibited NASA from using its funds for any kind of cooperation with China, was the vehicle through which the Chinese prohibition was implemented. The justification centered on concerns about national security and human rights. The U.S.'s main fear, though, was that China would steal their ideas or spy on them or something similar. This is understandable considering that both China and the U.S. have been deeply involved in dubious spy activities for the better part of a century, which has led to a great deal of paranoia. 
In any case, the Chinese chose to ignore them. We are here to build our own, will we? The interior of the Tangong will immediately catch your attention because to its vast and open, especially in contrast to the International Space Station. Tiangong features a modern, extremely simple design. The fascinating thing to note is that the Tiangong module's outside diameter, roughly 4.2 meters, or 14 feet, is almost exactly the same as the ISS module's diameter. Therefore, the distinction lies in the amount of available internal space. That's due to a few factors. In the case of number one, the ISS modules are usually substantially shorter and have more connecting connections between them, which leads to structural bottlenecks. For instance, the WEN Tian and Ming Tian modules are both 18 meters or 59 feet long, but the Destiny Lab on the ISS, which serves as the main working facility for US astronauts, is only 8.4 meters or 28 feet long. In addition, Tian Gang's technology is just more up to date, making it smaller and more suited for a smaller area. For instance, a large number of Tangong's equipment would connect wirelessly rather than requiring a maze of cables, as is the case with the International Space Station. Additionally, when not in operation, a large portion of the Tangong's electronics is concealed beneath these simple white panels. I'm not sure if that's purely decorative, more useful, or a direct result of their desire to keep their job hidden from prying eyes, but it does give the station a really sleek, contemporary appearance. In April 2021, Tangong's first module was able to enter orbit. The name Tianho, which translates to Harmony of the Heavens, refers to this central structure. The Tian is a 20-ton structure with a 4.2-meter maximum diameter that is equipped with all the components needed to operate as a space station and accommodate a three-person crew. It has an advanced docking node and airlock, solar panels, light support, propulsion systems, and a robotic arm. The core module is divided into three primary components. There is a spherical multi-docking node at the smaller end. This contains four ports, one of which is apparently permanently tied to the Tianhe. The main docking port for the station is located across from the core module, and is where the Shenzhou crew vehicle may dock. The twin research lab's berthing ports to the core module are located on the multi-docking node's two side ports. A second crew docking port is located on the node at the bottom. When two crew members, three Taikonauts, are manning the station at the same time during crew handovers, this is for usage. Furthermore, the top port isn't even a docking port. A hatchway is this. The crew will use this to leave the station and go on spacewalks, approaching Can H's slender cylindrical segment. There are crew quarters here. Three crew members can each have an own bunk, and all the amenities, including a space toilet, are provided. Additionally, a working space with three experimental racks is located at the larger end of the core module. This is also the location of the station's propulsion module, which keeps it in orbit. Finally, a second docking port reserved especially for the Tintro freight craft is located at the end of the module. This is also where the Chinese Space Telescope will eventually dock. The 10-meter-long primary robotic arm of the station is additionally supported by the Tian module, although it is slightly shorter than the 17-meter-long Canada Arm 2, which is presently in use at the ISS, the Chinese arm does have a comparable capability, and the potential for expansion, more on that in a moment. China debuted its Wenxian Research Laboratory module for the Tiangang on July 20, 22. The meaning of Wenxian is Heavenly Quest. This is an additional 20-ton structure that was carried by the long-range Mars 5B rocket. This is the first heavy-lift space launcher built in China, and it is in charge of launching the three Tangong modules into their 400 kilometers high orbit. One really intriguing rocket concept is the lengthy March 5th B configuration. It had four liquid-fueled side boosters that burn RP-1 kerosene and a hydrogen fuel-burning core stage. With this combo, the lengthy March becomes 5B the third most potent rocket in use now in the world, ranking after the Falcon Heavy and the Delta IV Heavy. This specific rocket's method of delivering these 20-ton payloads into their orbit is quite unusual and contentious. Hence, those four side boosters will detach from the rocket once it has cleared Earth's atmosphere, which occurs at an altitude of roughly 100 kilometers. However, the booster engine's core will keep burning. At this moment, a normal rocket will experience a full-stage separation, in which its entire lower section separates and returns to Earth, typically splashing into the ocean. Once more, on a conventional rocket, the payload and the remaining portion of the rocket will be propelled into orbit by a second-stage engine. That isn't what the lengthy March 5th B does. The rocket remains intact after the four side boosters detach, and the core booster engines continue to drive the module to its orbital insertion point before it eventually separates. This indicates that the rocket's main structure is currently in orbit preventing it from plummeting back into the sea. However, it is also not in a stable orbit, so its stay in that region will be brief. For a few days, it is traveling toward Earth as it gradually loses altitude and is drawn back into the atmosphere. These days, they are simply too large to burn up like a typical satellite. 
while it doesn't remain entire, some of it will eventually descend to the Earth's surface. And for that reason, over the Indian Ocean, this specific Long March 5th B-Booster stage broke up, showering scrap metal across the Indonesian archipelago. In any case, the Wednesday end module on the space station has two uses. It also features space for a range of scientific experiments and three more crew sleeping chambers, increasing the station's capacity to six people at once. In addition, it has two enormous solar panels that extend the module's wingspan to 55 meters. These cutting-edge solar cells maximize the amount of surface area that can be deployed by being incredibly thin and flexible. They provide the station with about 7 kilowatts of electricity and are incredibly efficient. Research initiatives on biotechnology, variable gravity effects, and life sciences are housed in four experimental rack areas on Wednesday end. There's then an area for outside experimentation towards the smaller end of the module. In essence, this is an area where nodes can be attached to the ship's exterior hull in order to gather data. Additionally, crew members on the Wednesday end can enter the airlock and hatch to reach the exterior attachment point. This airlock will serve as the station's main spacewalk airlock. Additionally, the Wednesday end comes with a second robotic arm that the crew can use to reach these attachment points. Despite its little length of about 5 meters, this arm is really cool because it can crawl all over the station and function from various spots. There are several connection sites for the arm throughout the station. Thus in order to crawl, the arm simply latches onto the subsequent attachment point and releases the one before it. It can move throughout the station in this manner indefinitely, resembling some sort of bizarre robotic caterpillar. Furthermore, this secondary arm can really connect to the main arm to construct a robotic arm that is 50 meters long, roughly matching the dimensions and functionalities of Canada Arm 2 on the International Space Station. The mention, or Heavenly Dream, is the third and last significant component of the puzzle. This additional laboratory module for study arrived in Tiangong on October 20, 22. The main distinction between the Mengxian and the Wengxian, aside from the absence of crew's sleeping quarters, is that the Mengxian will have additional room for experimental racks. In addition, the Mengxian has a separate airlock that will serve as a backup cargo port. The Mengxian has been fully powered and brought up to full capability with the addition of the third module. Its massive solar panel array is identical to that of the NCN. The Chinese Space Telescope is another option. All that is known about it is that it is under development and most likely will be comparable to the Hubble Telescope in terms of capabilities. This is intended to function without assistance from the Tangong. It is not an integral part of the station, rather, it will orbit in near proximity. The telescope will be able to dock with the Tangong making it possible for it to be maintained and enhanced in the future. This is something that is nearly impossible to achieve with James Webb and not achievable with the Hubble. That is a significant benefit. In addition, there have already been rumors that China is thinking of adding another Tiangang to its existing one. Chinese officials disclosed intentions to increase the number of modules at the Tangong station from 3 to 6 during a recent meeting of the International Astronautical Congress. In the upcoming years, China intends to introduce a new multifunctional extension module. In around four years, they estimate, more full-sized modules will start to join that station. As things stand, only a restricted amount of foreign research programs in association with the European Space Agency and the US Office for Outer Space Affairs will be coming to Tiangang. That's a terrific beginning, but given the Tiangang's current little size, it's unlikely that any foreign crew members will pay them a visit. However, that can change in the future with an expansion. There will undoubtedly be no Americans associated with Tiangang. The same Wolf Amendment that forbids Chinese nationals from ever entering the International Space Station also forbids American astronauts from interacting in any way with the Chinese station. With any luck, this has given everyone a clearer understanding of the Chang'an's operations and the events taking on there. Unfortunately, it is very difficult to find this information. Hopefully, there will come a day when political unrest around the world subsides and everyone can cooperate. Naturally, it won't be the case anytime soon given the current circumstances and what is going on in and around Taiwan. So for now, this will have to do. Please return each week for more updates on all things relating to the aerospace industry and intergalactic travel. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That actually does assist us, and we subscribe to Space Race to see more videos. Similar to this every week, we complete one extended essay and one news update. We currently have two more for you to view on the screen if you'd like more.